If you don't have these in your shoe collection, you just might be insane. Now, but for real though, these actually might be one of the best releases to come out this year so far, and I'm gonna explain. When it comes to Air Jordan 1 lows in the OG cut, it's hard to fail on that shoe, especially when you have simple color blocking, and you can never go wrong with a classic color blocking style, like the black toe like we see on this shoe. I'm sure everybody remembers the phase a couple years ago when the neutral gray 1 lows came out, and these were heavily in a lot of people's rotations, and as you can see, I be wearing my pair a lot and I had to double up on these too. And a couple other lows that I rock often that are heavy in my rotation that I knew I had to double up on, the Mystic Navy Air Jordan 1 low and the Travis Scott Black Phantom. Those three shoes I just showed you serve a different purpose in my collection in my rotation. And I know with adding these into my rotation with the splash of red and especially with the OG color blocking, I feel like I just can't go wrong. So you know what that means. I had to double up on these too. Oh yeah, and if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA Show. Hey! Now before we get into breaking down the shoe and me explaining a little bit more as to why you have to have these in your collection, we gotta talk about the history first and some of the sneakers that came before it when it comes to the black toe style. So as we all know, back in 1985, Michael Jordan originally had the black toe Air Jordan 1s, a clean shoe, and I still feel like one of the more underrated colorways when it comes to the OG colorways, but definitely a very iconic color blocking style when it comes to Jordan 1 retros in particular. Now another shoe that aligns with the black toe color blocking, the old love, new love Air Jordan 1. This is the old love colorway. And as you can see, you got your black toe. This is on a mid during this time in 2007, 2008. Mids were hot. We didn't really see that many high tops back then. And this shoe right here is a grail to a lot of older sneaker heads. Now years start to go by and a lot of people are requesting to see the high top version with the Nike Air on there. And later on, we saw the black toe Air Jordan 1's retro and the new style and cut. And this shoe right here, honestly, kind of went under the radar. You could get these at outlets when they first came out. But as we all know, Air Jordan 1 hype started to really blow up a couple years later. And next thing you know, shoes like this became really expensive. And during that time, while shoes were starting to rise, we saw another classic iteration of this version. And that was the Union Black Toe Air Jordan 1s, which they knew they could take a classic nostalgic colorway, add a little bit of twist to the shoe and call it a collaboration. And next thing you know, this shoe right here, especially at my size, these things go for easily over $2,000. And I know there's a couple other models that I didn't mention in this video. This isn't a full breakdown of black toe ones in particular, but I'm just kind of highlighting a couple different shoes that really stuck out to me and stuff that I have in my collection. So why is any of that even important? Typically when it comes to sneakers and the history and nostalgia behind them, that's what causes value to rise over time when a new release comes out. Now yes, we can say, hey, this shoe is a brick or it didn't sell out or was an easy cop. Great, no problem. We understand that there's different things happening in the economy right now. There's different models that are trending a little bit more. But one thing that I can definitely tell you is whenever you see an OG colorway added to an iconic model, especially something that we haven't seen before. We didn't originally see an OG black toe Air Jordan 1. So now that this is kind of like the first time we're getting it on an OG cut, yes, I know there's a retro, but again, to me, those are kind of weak, but that's a whole nother topic. Either way, when we get something like this on an OG cut, this is definitely a situation where I could see this shoe, next thing you know, $400, $500 down the line. Because if the retro cut version is going for that much money, I know the OG cut is going to be going for some money down the line. So not only is this a good addition to your collection, but potentially a good investment as well. And I know I sound so enthusiastic about this shoe, but at the same time, we got a couple problems that we need to talk about. So as you can see right here, when you put the two shoes side by side, yes, they do look similar, but there are a lot of differences when it comes to the materials and that's something that I'm not really sure how good I feel about. If you look at the Mystic Navy Air Jordan 1 lows, one thing that a lot of people didn't like about these was the leather was really shiny on the black part and then on the blue part, it was a lot more dull and people didn't really like how it contrasted against each other like that. Now, when you look at these black toe Air Jordan 1s, you have a similar vibe when it comes to that. On the front end, you got a shinier black leather. Obviously the white isn't too shiny. And then going to the back end, the swoosh looks like it's a different material than the actual front end around the toe and then on the red hit right here if you see this side by side with the other retro you could tell the leathers are completely different and the color is different as well this leather on here is going to be a lot more faint and dull similar to the blue mystic navy pair that i showed you guys earlier you can see that those are very similar when it comes to the materials now me personally I'm not really a fan of that. I wish they would have done very similar to the OG style, keeping those leathers very consistent throughout the whole upper. But again, that might just be a thing for me. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Now, another big difference when it comes to the low tops, they're like the OGs, 
but they're not. And what do I mean by that? If you look at the tongue on the OG style color blocking, you have a white tongue, and then on the retro low, you have a black tongue. So one thing that Jordan Brand always loves to do is they always like to tweak something a little bit and kind of let you see the differences between eras and things like that. Now, when it comes to this, the all black with the black laces, to me, it looks good. But at the same time, if I'm going for that OG nostalgic vibe, I would say, hey, I want the white tongue on there with the white patch and the black text. Those are two things that really stand out heavy to me when it comes to, are these like the OGs? And then obviously it's like, there was never an OG of the low top. So this is kind of like our first version of that shoe. But at the same time, typically you would want them to take the same thing they did on the high top and do the exact same thing on the low top. So let me know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section, because Again, I'm not mad at this. It still looks cool, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it just, it's not hitting all the way. And you can say, hey, they did a black tongue on the old loves and they did a black tongue on the unions, so who cares? And I definitely could understand the argument between both sides. And at the end of the day, I still think these are a great addition to the collection. Now, another thing when it comes to switch ups is this pair of standard comes with a pair of red laces in there. They're not all the way laced up, but you just got that kind of front bar right there. Me, immediately, I was like, I gotta take these red laces laces out we're throwing the black laces in there just because the red laces didn't really match with the back end and the outsole the colors are kind of a little bit off and then i feel like just the red on there it just kind of throws things off for me i think it looks a lot more smooth with the all black on there but another thing that i've seen online i haven't had a chance to do it yet because i've literally as soon as i got these i just put them on and i've been wearing them i've been wearing them all week I've been loving rocking them. I think adding sail or white laces will look good in here as well. So let me know what you guys think about that down below. And maybe we can make a tutorial lacing video about that and you know, lacing Air Jordan 1 lows. I have done one in the past on how to do it with different styles of lacing, but not really switching up the colors of laces. So if you wanna see something like that, let me know down below in the comment section. Now, as you guys know, I'm always interested to see what everybody else thinks about the shoe, if they think it's fire or trash. So if you haven't already, make sure you follow me on IG so you can participate participate in the polls and I always post the results here on the channel. Ask the people a simple question. Is this shoe fire or is this shoe trash? And this is what they said. 88% of the people chose fire and 12% of the people chose trash. So that's kind of a good indicator of right there. Damn near 90% of the people are rocking with this shoe as well. And again, not everybody has to like a shoe. Not everybody has to do what I say or anything like that. It's all kind of fun and jokes and games and everything when I'm like, you're crazy if you don't like this shoe. But it is like one of those things like, this is a classic, bro. That's all I'm saying. It's a classic. You can't go wrong with it. It's essential. It's easy to rock. There's so many different outfits you could put with it. You can mix up so many different things. Like I said, switching the laces, you name it. There's a lot of different options when it comes to this shoe. And not to mention that they are extremely affordable right now. The fact that you can grab these for retail and maybe even potentially get them on sale somewhere is a great option. And some people is going to argue, oh, it's sold out in my city. I get that. Everywhere is different depending on the demographic of where you're at and all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, this is definitely a very affordable sneaker. And I don't think these will be an affordable sneaker for a long period of time. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Did you pick this shoe up? Do you, are you waiting for it? Do you think it's gonna go up in value? All the different things. What do you plan on wearing with it? What type of outfits? This is a great back to school shoe. There's so many different reasons why I think this is a great sneaker. I would never let you down. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there. Listen, my DNA, hey, the hey, only pop. choice I like to make what I'm aware today. One I would never let you down, it's in my DNA The only choice I like to make what I'm aware today I was made for it, it's in the 